Hello, Taha Community Church. Yeah, I know you're fed up uh, with a certain subject. It seems like for four years, the national news media and every talking head on the blogosphere is talking politics. Mm. So, I guess we're going to do it too. So, I'm a Christian, and mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned how Jesus got involved with politics. Yeah. Uh, I've noticed, like, talking with other Christians and stuff, um, mm -hmm. they just don't care about politics. They don't, like, have any interests or anything, mm -hmm. and even though it, like, affects our lives every day and stuff, so I'm just kind of wondering, like, why do you think Christians don't really care about politics? Or a lot of Christians, um, not every Christian. When people say, I don't care whether they're Christians or not, yeah. when people say I don't care about politics, I just ask them to take out their iPhone uh, or their droid or whatever they have, or if they're one of the seven people in the world with a Windows phone, they, it works on that too. And I ask them, I give them a couple of words to Google, and what comes up is this. That's the Korean Peninsula, right? Now, why is there a difference between South Korea and North Korea? Don't say electricity. <laughs> Look, South Korea is one of the freest countries in the world. It's one of the most Christianized countries in the world. And uh, it's got prosperity, it's got the gospel. North Korea, on the other hand, is a concentration camp. The main reason for the difference between South and North Korea is what? What's the subject of his question? Politics, right? The South has political freedom, the North does not. Now my only question is, to people who say they don't care about politics, which country would you rather live in? Yeah, you'd rather live in South. Well, if you want to rather live in South, you better get involved because some people want to make it like North, right? In fact, we, we take it for granted in our country. We think that this is the way it is around the, around the world. No, it's not. We are exceptional, not because we're exceptional people, but because our documents, our founding documents are exceptional. The founding fathers grounded rights in God, but they didn't have religious intolerance. They used the moral law, not a particular sectarian denomination to establish the country. And for Christians who say, well, I don't really need to be involved in politics because, you know, I just got to preach the gospel. Can you preach the gospel in North Korea? No. Go to some of the countries I've been to, Iran, Saudi Arabia, China. You can't do what we're doing in this room right now legally. Why? Because politically they've ruled it out. So I don't care whether you're an atheist or a Christian or anywhere in between, you ought to be concerned about this. And if you're a Christian, if you think about it, laws affect everything. Your freedom, your church, your children, your family, your health, your money, your business, your property, your school, your home, your security, your safety, the poor, the unborn, the gospel. Everyone and everything are affected by what laws are made right here in Columbia, in your localities, and what are made in Washington, D.C. And so why wouldn't you be involved? Here we are to, to chat about politics a little bit. And as you saw from that opening video, yeah, Christians need to get involved, you know, you see. It's pretty pretty dynamic how dark North Korea is compared yeah. to South Korea and how free markets, you know, really kind of mere freedom. And it's, I think what Christ and Christianity called us to be is free. And there's so many principles that you pick up along the way in Christianity. Um, you know, right off the bat, property rights is an amazing... One of the Ten Commandments, right? It's, it's one of the amazing things, and it's one of the, the first things that a Marxist and or communist worldview wants to strip away from you. Mm -hmm. They want complete control and power. Um, did you know that uh, originally to vote in this country, you needed to be a property owner? Mm -hmm. You remember that from... Yeah, and sure, sure. and it, it kind of makes sense. It seems prejudicial or, you know, kind of, uh, you know, rich against poor and the power staying with the mm -hmm. property owners. But it's the property owners that have a vested interest in to, you know, vote um, property taxes on me when you don't own, own property. It's kind of, I think that's kind of the premise, right? That's kind of, a, mm -hmm. that's kind of stealing, mm -hmm. you know? We're going to tax you because you've got this stuff. So, mm -hmm. so there, there's many issues happening. Um, I'm sure you've heard multiple different things over the course of time, how we see a Marxist kind of communist idea creeping into the Democratic Party over the course of the last 30, 40, 50 years. Um, there's a documentary we're going to hopefully show in the near future called Agenda, mm -hmm. and we'll make that a church event. It's a very interesting documentary, about 10 plus years old, but it really does um, kind of kind of lay out their, their plan to, to bring on a, a, a communist and or Marxist um, government here in the United yeah. States. So, 
So uh, what's interesting is um, in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says... 10, 31. That's my dyslexia. <laughs> Sorry, you're <Okay>. dyslexic. <laughs> whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do to the glory of God. All right. Mm -hmm. So when we vote, we're going to be voting for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to issues, right? It really does. Yes. I think it's super important as we... Um, you know, even as I wrote to the, for the newsletter, the church newsletter, is that as Christians, you know, the, whatever we do, the, the, the kingdom of God invades our life and it invades. So we don't just say, well, I have my religion and I have my politics and like those can be separate. The Bible isn't speaking that way at all. No. I mean, it, we, we our, our faith and what we believe, what we believe in Scripture affects, you know, everything, economics, philosophy, you know, epistemology, how we learn things. But I think for us, one of the things, the most important thing is that I don't ever vote people because people are sinners. You know, I, I, there was one time I wrote Jesus in, you know, I actually yeah. did because I was so frustrated that um, it, we're always picking the lesser of two evils because people are sinners and including us. So even if we were to run, I mean, um, none of us are completely 100 percent sin free. And so but we I think scripture would have us look at issues and uh, look at scriptural principles that are found in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Well, what's interesting is there, our country, you know, when we had a moral fabric and we had a lot more moral obedience, not necessarily that everybody was Christian, but morality and being a moral of moral character was, was a virtue and value. Mm -hmm. And so divorce rates were, were lower and adultery was, was at least hidden and not discovered. I mean, it, it's interesting. And there's, there's tales back in uh, JFK's time where primarily the Secret Service and or even the press decided not to make a big scandal yeah. out of some of his affairs. Mm -hmm. And that and that's an interesting bit of respect where basically the offices used to have such reverence and respect yeah. that even the media didn't want to tread there. And uh, well, to distract from, you know, the overall goals of the party. Right. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. I mean, whatever, whatever, which whatever side it was. For yeah. Sure. And that gives us the wrong idea of, of who our president is. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're not lily white perfect people. We have perpetually and continually vote sinners into public yeah, office. I, exactly. That's all there is to it. Yeah. But you do like, you know, you can, if, you know, a man who's married to his wife, a single wife, his whole life, you know, you, you look at the elder qualifications, yep. you kind of think that should go over into the public you would hope, office yes. yep. too. But, but the standard for public office is way low now, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and tragically, we see a lot of, uh, antics and, and name calling and just a lot of really kick and blow the belt so to speak where basically politics is just it's so ugly now it, it's kind of tragic you know but that's not doesn't change the fact that we need to vote and we need to look at the issues and vote properly mm -hmm. so in in as christians have for for ever since wave uh, uh roe versus wade we've often voted a single voter issue which is the abortion issue mm -hmm. that seems to be uh, a single uh, issue that that we vote on um, year after year. Um, what's interesting is whether we've gotten um, <laughs> if we've gotten what we voted for. I mean, some politicians pay, play lip service oh, sure. to it, yeah, and nothing really happens. To my surprise, I did think Donald Trump was only playing lip service to it. Mm -hmm. um, Me too, honestly. In the yeah, yeah, on the front end of this, I I thought he he really was just going to say that and just to get into power and stuff. But I think statistically, we see that he's like the strongest pro-life candidate that has ever been in office. Yeah. He's done. Now, the pro-life movement is un uneffectual. I mean, in the sense that they haven't had a lot of effect, but it's going to be the judiciary appointments that, yeah, that, sure. that kick the ball over the, the goalpost, so to well, speak. That's, that's, I mean, Roe v. Wade, by definition, there, there wasn't a law that was passed because, you know, the Constitution says that laws are passed by the legislator, right? Unless what you bring But when... They just voted, you know, the judicial, basically judicial legislation. That's kind of been the big thing. And when the Supreme Court did that in 73, they didn't say, hey, you know what? This has to go back to the, the Congress to create a law to, so that it can be constitutional. They just fiat by fiat said, there yeah. you go. Yeah. And so in the same way, it's interesting how uh, many people on, you know, the, the, the left, if you want to say the liberal side, were, was, were okay with that. But if the, if the conservatives do it, all of a sudden now they're <laughs> they're not okay with it it's like well hey you know 
Yeah. And that, that's why being constitutionalist, you know, yeah, being someone agreed. that just understands the letter of the law, it's like good hermeneutics. Uh, exactly. We know, is, we yeah. know the intention of the Constitution and the yep. framers and, and what they expected to do. Oh, and this is yep. a clear abu abuse of power and stuff. And I'm going to state an obvious thing here. We, we, we see this question that, that both Kamala Harris and, and Biden are refusing to answer in regards to packing the court, mm -hmm. where basically if they get in power, they're going to just add as many yeah. liberal-minded judges that are going to try to legislate from the, the bench and, and pack. And, and so, I mean, that's an obvious thing we see. So I tell you what, that's a second issue. <laughs> if you yeah. got abortion is one, yeah. this is a second issue because abortion may be the, you know, the, the straw that broke the camel's back where they want to pack the court. But any and everything, they'll now legislate that way if they appoint yeah. a bunch. And then all that will happen is if, if the conservatives ever get back into power, then they're going to pack the court yeah. even more. We're gonna or just have, remove. We're going to have a hundred, yeah, remove, <laughs> yeah. but who do you have remove? hundreds yeah. of judges, and, and now we're just going to be in a, a gridlock because they're not supposed to make rules. Well, and, and I'll say this, that there's, you know, we're talking about often as we do, there's a moral issue and there's a legal issue. I mean, currently... Uh, abortion is legal. Uh, is it moral? Obviously not. And in the same way, when you look at the uh, the Constitution, uh, is it legal for them, if for the majority party, along with the, for them to pack the court? Yeah. Con 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 the Constitution allows that. Yeah. Okay. But 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 unfortunately, I don't think the framers they were so no, no, sure. they didn't they didn't. I, I agree it. with that. That because yeah. they, that's why they gave them lifetime appointments, so they wouldn't yeah. it wouldn't be political. Well, on that same hand. The same group that says, well, we're going to pack the court um, and we don't see anything wrong because it's legal. Well, they're criticizing Trump for uh, nominating, you know, Amy Coney Barrett. It will, and I was watching this the other day and they were, it was asking um, of some senator in, on the news. And surprisingly, you know, Wolf Blitzer was asking him, you keep saying that this is a sham. This is an illegitimate process. And so he says, how is this illegitimate according to the Constitution? Yeah. And he, well, uh, and, and he said, okay, let me, let me see. You don't like it, but you're, but you have to acknowledge that this is legitimate. And he goes, well, yes, it is constitutional. And so it's like, okay, so in the same way, we have to be consistent in that, you know, it is legal, Yeah. but we come back to the moral issue, regardless of whether abortion is, is approved by a hundred percent of humanity. It doesn't mean that it's morally right or that no. there's not going to be no. answers. You know, no, they've legal, they legalized a lot of things, right? countless perverse things in our mm -hmm. culture and it just breaks my heart yeah. and that's one of the things i used to say and i still say it is you know one party attempts to legislate morality and the yeah. other party attempts to legislate charity mm -hmm. and in both cases we're dealing with the fallen nature mm -hmm. of man where primarily why do we need legislation yeah. and once again from from scriptures we know about the law you're yeah. preaching through galatians talking about going back under the law yeah. the law can only do pushbacks from from our even fault our, our evil evil fallen nature you know it's all it it's just an arm going like this because if they truly want to do this stuff they're going to yeah. do it I, i'll say this too that you know oftentimes christianity or our faith is put mutually exclusive like well you know some some pastors are like you know well we, we preach the kingdom of god right we're not to get involved or the kingdom's out of this world you know but on the other hand as the video showed um we live here, and so, you know, granted, if we were living under Rome or something, there's different perspectives, but we are part of the process here, and God would absolutely, I think, give us, uh, hold us accountable for the stewardship of our vote and our participation. Yeah. Primarily, it's not so much to get a certain morality thing. I think that's certainly important to defend the, 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 Ro the Romans 13, the government's job is to reward good and punish evil, okay? Mm -hmm. And how do we know that? Well, that's based on the morals of Scripture. But secondly... For the sake of the gospel, which we know is the only answer, that we need to have the freedom to preach it and not be censored. That's why the First Amendment is so awesome in this particular culture. We need to do everything we can to defend that. Yeah. Not not just to have so I can say what I want, but so I can be free to preach the gospel, which again is eternal. It's eternal salvation. Yeah. And it's amazing. It's just it's it's ironic or just kind of like almost a cruel joke that the way the world frames things like this, the, they would put that under hate laws, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hate crimes yep. and, and hate language. And it's amazing because it's really the love language of mm -hmm. God. You, you know, the gospel is the power of God to change lives. It is yeah. the, it, it's, it's where it all begins in, in receiving and understanding your need for, for Christ, you know, as, as a savior. So it, it's an astonishing thing. Well, let, let me just add this because it's, it might be a good segue into getting to Romans one is, you know, in Deuteronomy 5 and Deuteronomy 32, you know, both of those passages, they, 
God is giving them the law, right? Mm -hmm. And he's giving Israel, and he says, Oh, that they would just obey my commands so that they would live long on the earth and yeah. things would go well for them. So you see, you see God's heart. God gives these laws, these moral boundaries, in order to bless people. And I was thinking about that, where you take any of the, um, you know, in any of our cultures, it could be white, black, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. But you look at some of the, the, the cultures now where uh, dads aren't around, right? And you look at the, the travesty of all of what that happens, single moms you know, trying to work, trying to raise kids, and it, it creates havoc economically on all of these communities, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I was thinking, here's God saying, oh, if you guys would just obey my rules, which is don't sleep with anybody until you're married. Well, that, you just eliminated any need for abortion for the, for the most part because you, dad's still around because he's not sleeping with the woman because he's... He's married her, yeah. and so now you have the, the family. Hopefully they want to bring forth kids. Yeah, they're, they're bringing it together. Most likely they're doing it wise, and God's just saying, you know, if you just took my laws, even from a non-religious perspective, yeah. threw them in that community, and they were actually obeyed, it immediately would turn the entire community all the way around. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely insane, but yet we've abandoned God's law, mm -hmm. and God's giving us the fruit, and then you know, you come to Romans 1 yeah. of God's abandonment, and allowing us to have the fruit of our actions. Yeah, and and, and what we're seeing there too is that you know the wrath of abandonment. We're mm -hmm. seeing that since mankind, you know, although they knew God and neither gave Him glory nor thanks, mm -hmm. you see then just a barrage of negative consequences. Yeah, in that in that text, and it's just heartbreaking because it you know it reminds me of of Pharaoh. You know, just want him hardening his heart and God and him mm -hmm. and God back and forth and and man's fallen nature and desire to do these perverse yeah. evil things suppress the truth and the righteousness yeah. and and then worship the creation instead of the creator you know you see the whole uh, save the planet green mm -hmm. green new deal the green new deal is like just right there it's like oh, part it's, of the democratic platform yeah. it's right there in the text yeah. about basically using fear of of the planet destroying to control the masses to get yeah. these votes and stuff and, and when when god our faith is in god and we're citizens of the king well and the, and the key is it's out of balance i mean again i'm all for being wise a steward of god's creation of course yeah. but but when you say we're going to tax or we're going to eliminate jobs and now we're going to disrupt people's families and and I saw one thing. Well, we're going to take all the the miners, the coal miners, and we got to eliminate that whole industry, and we're going to teach them to do Microsoft. You know, yeah. And somebody said that. Is that? Uh, it doesn't matter. But you say that. I don't something know that. like that. But you're oh, like, yeah. Really? These guys are like sixty. They've been. There's no way. And it's easy from these elitist perspective. Yeah, oh, yeah. Just to say, this is what we're going to do for you, and you know, deal with it. Yeah. Where you know. Uh, can we do it balanced? Of course, we should be able to, but in the sense of, uh, of invoking fear that the world is falling, look, very clear, Jeremiah 31, other passages, God has established this earth. As long as mankind is here, he will not allow it. He will not allow us to destroy it. Now, that yeah. doesn't mean we should be, again, unwise or... Sure. But sure. we don't have to live in fear. No. no. If, for example, if Jesus comes back in five years, the whole thing's going to burn anyway. You know, yeah. the second Peter three. We get a new heavens. We're gonna get so we're getting new bodies. I mean, this is what our faith in right. you know pretty much assures us of yeah. balance. And and it's yes. difficult. I, you know, it's difficult to live in that in that mindset. Yeah, you know, I mean, mindset, yeah. try. I, you know, someone in the you know we, we talk about this. Someone is mourning a loss and you're going through a real tough time in life. It's hey, don't worry, you're gonna live eternity with you, with God in heaven. It's like, well, thanks, but I'm not there right now. <laughs> right. So we, we understand that, but but let's not be manipulated uh -huh. by fear and some of the things that, that they're, they're yeah. trying to push on us and stuff. And, and the other manipulation, of course, is our conscience in regards to our, our consciences are God-given, you know, they're God's fingerprint on us, where basically we have passions and desires yeah. and concerns for certain things. And so there's this idea that you can that you can basically, you know, vote different issues depending on uh, on the importance they are to you personally. Mm. It's kind of postmodern in the sense it's very that, post that I yeah. that I'm worried about the poor person more so than than the unborn child yeah. being aborted. Yeah. So I want I want my money or my government to take care of the poor. So so it looks like an an, an equal or reasonable thing to to consider, but. You know, first and foremost, the way the government goes around taking care of the poor 
is very problematic. I don't see oh, that man. they have a good track record. And I see that basically the people that they throw money at end up in worse, worse case because they, Often. they kind of become yeah. victims or, you know, enslaved to this system. And well, I, generation after generation, they don't know how to get out of it. I could give you a handful of people that I know personally that even so-called Christians that are like, um, I said, hey, I got a job off. You know, maybe they're on disability or they've had unemployment or whatever, and they have a job offer, and, they, and they're like, oh, no, I can't do that. And I go, well, why not? And they go, well, because if I do that, I'll lose my disability. And I was like, well, don't you want to move beyond that? Yeah. So, because yeah. then they can't go do this. And then what happens often is they can only make, seven, you know, they, they have their 700 a month, and if they make $100, so then they end up going and doing all these other jobs under the table. Under the table. Sure. So it's not transparent. Yeah. And then so they end up losing some of their integrity, right? Uh, in order to keep that. And it's like, yeah. you know, when Paul said, if you don't work, you don't eat. There's, there, there, again, that's a principle that is a very good principle. Uh, granted, there's exceptions to everything. But nevertheless, that gets people, God knows what we need, that we need to be yeah. working hard and not be lazy yeah. and, you know, and other things. But I, and let's go back to that for, for what your comment about this postmodern is that, the Bible, you know, I preached a sermon, um, I don't know, several months ago about, I think the title was, when is it okay to rebel against the government? Okay, and that was mm -hmm. back in March or April, whatever it was. But one of the things that we did in there was we examined the scripture as it relates to God, God's prioritization of his law. So there are some laws like, you know, which, you know, clothing you're going to wear in the Old Testament anyway, as an example, versus murdering or adultery, the, the, the big 10, right? The mm -hmm. 10 commandments. There's no doubt capital punishment wasn't given for, you know, wearing different clothes, you know, or whatever, uh, or unintentional sin. But if you murdered somebody, God said, you get the death penalty now, yeah. including Exodus well, 21, yeah. a, a baby. I mean, well, that's very clear. That's Noah hearing it directly from God in, in Genesis 9. Genesis 9. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so it's, it predates the Mosaic yep. law. So that is something that when you think about murder, it's, it's a high high crime yep. and and it's punishable by death of course in the old testament um you know the apostle paul says that hey if i've done anything worthy of death i deserve the death penalty yep. showing that the death penalty mm -hmm. is alive and well in the new Romans testament. 13 says they don't bear the sword in vain well what what, what was the sword for the yeah. sword was to enforce the death penalty yeah. and paul's writing they don't do it in vain and he was he was giving he was giving support for it and that's that's why you know oftentimes pro-life people are very pro-life. Well, if you really cared about life, then you would you would be against the death penalty. Well, there's a difference. Let's be. Yeah, one might truly, be truly truly is a murderer who's murdered ten people versus an instant baby. Instant I mean, baby. you know, certainly well, guilty. Federal head well, chip, whatever. Let's not whatever. Go there. Yeah, not go there. But <laughs> nevertheless, God clearly understood that. Um, you know, the death penalty was for people who were especially premeditated yeah. murder, yeah. and he God was God endorsed. God's the one that brought it up. Yeah. Okay, you want against it? Take it up with God to, to Noah. But yeah. God brought it up, and so very clearly, there isn't a double standard. There is not a double standard in God's mind. How no. is that even possible? Yeah. And it, it, it's interesting because in, in this time period, there, there's prominent Christian speakers that are, that are saying stuff. And, I, you know, basically, we know you hear the same, well, Jesus Christ isn't a Republican. Well, of course not. Of We're, course not. That's, <laughs> that, but, but there's conversations coming out of a lot of the leaders in the Christian community that are basically saying, the time has passed where you can even consider voting the Democratic ticket anymore because because their their platform. Well, think of their platform. Their platform is is trying to it, it, in one sense, it seems that God, who's in Romans one, is bringing a, a wrath of abandonment and he's using the Democratic platform as a way to manage it or or or, or push it deeper into our culture with, you know, that with that the hate crimes and the, and the, the pro homosexual yeah. and the transgenders. I mean, the idea of, of, of people identifying as different sex, I know these individuals need our compassion. They oh, are the mission sure. field. Yep. We love them. I'm not, I'm not judging them and throwing them off the bus. They can be saved. You know? Yeah, they're, they're saveable. Mm -hmm. But, but you look at that reprobate mind concept confusion. where they can't Gender determine confusion. the truth. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so you're just, you're looking at this consequence now, I know to some degree, all of these things have always been in society to, to some degree. Mm -hmm. But as the volume of these conversations have turned up in our culture, we are, we are now really being, being tripped up by it. Mm -hmm. And we're taking the eye off the ball, which is simply loving our neighbor and, and food, shelter, and clothing. And, yep. you know, dealing with what's important as a, as a group, of, as a society, as a nation. 
And so it certainly is a distraction at least. But it really does seem like the platform is, you know, John MacArthur straight up said something to the fact that the... Well, we have his quote here. <laughs> Romans 1, is, he, is that the Romans 1? Yeah, one? well, let's, 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 before we preface this, let's say that we got to remember that, you know, like, as you said, it, and I'll stand by it, you know, to me, I, I don't really, uh, I'm not just this in love with all Republicans, you know, or, or, or no, no. Democrats. So no, in that sense, no. I, if I call myself anything, I, t I tend towards more conservative issues because the issues, there, there, there are moral issues. And again, I don't vote people. But what's changed is, it's interesting growing up with my parents, you know, they were Democratic. But yet, the you know, the, and my mom, we had a picture of John F. Kennedy in our, in our house, you know. I like John F. Kennedy. Right. So, but, but you look <laughs> Take at him any day. The, that Democrat is different than what has happened yeah, in the last five years, yeah. eight years. Really, yeah, that's, it's that's, morphed. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say is I just think time, time has gone by where basically it's very difficult to look at what they stand for yeah. and what they're doing. And finding anybody in their party that maybe is an individual that, that is more moderate or whatever, but... If they if they vote the platform the democratic platform just, line it's it's very problematic and I would always hate I mean just a few short years ago I wouldn't even consider thinking that but a lot of a lot of Christian leaders are thinking like look we just we need to be honest right here there's there's not a lot of hope for this party it has anything you know redeeming if, in if, it if they what they've done and allowed again the extreme Marxist left. Yeah. to hijack it. I actually feel bad for any of the cent centrist Democrats in that regard because now they're stuck in this system going, I, I don't believe in that. But again, if you look at it as a platform, again, I just, you could read their thing, but this is what, this is the quote from MacArthur. He says, uh, when he was talking to Trump on the phone, which who cares who he's talking to? He says, we talked a little bit about why, certainly from a biblical standpoint, Christians could not vote Democratic. There's no way that a Christian biblical Christian, can affirm the slaughter of babies, homosexual activity, homosexual marriage, and any kind of gross immorality. So he's elevating two issues, you know, which is one of the things I had wrote about. I didn't read this, but in my own, uh, I got, arrived at the same place in my article to the church was you have abortion, murder, very clear. And then you also have the disintegration of the family and yeah. along with all the sexual morality and gender confusion, male and female. I mean, that's part of their of their platform clearly unabashedly unapologetically yeah, yeah. that um they are encouraging and you see what what are they going to finance you you go you see drag queens now reading at libraries you know to little kids and you see it being part of the curriculum where it's being funded yeah and so as a christian you go i didn't know that and you go yeah the money again the money is going to be geared towards encouraging confusion experimentation hey you're six well you certainly shouldn't c consider yourself a biological yeah. anything until you at least experiment it for a while um yeah it's, a, oh, yeah. it's really hard i think so what he says here he again he summarizes in two points at least the family sexual morality kind of blends together as well and then the, the abortion issue yeah yeah and i think of uh, this puberty blocking you know drugs that they're mm -hmm. giving young people that just breaks my heart because you, you just know there's lawsuits in five, ten years. Yep. Once these, oh, once these, already, yeah. these young individuals realize their parents pushed them or a doctor. Or social media pushed them and their parents media. allowed it. Yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. because it's just a fad. I mean, these, these kids are so impressionable and just so, you know, so want to be part of some group, right? And, that, you know, you just want to belong at that age. And it just breaks my heart because they're, they're looking for something to belong to. And they get talked into this this fad of, of saying I'm not who I was born to be, and it's it's a very binary thing. I'm it, sorry. It, it, well, and Jesus was very binary in Matthew 19, you know, Mark 10, both passages very clear. I mean, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll read the the Matthew or the Romans one because here you, it's 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 not just it's not just the gender confusion or the sexual immorality confusion. It, it gets deeper where God's abandonment of a culture. And we see that our culture, at least from a, a professional or a, a legislative level, you know, a government level, we abandoned God in the sixties. Okay. Right. Yeah. Took got out of school and all those other things. And so it says God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's body bodies. They traded the truth about God for a lie, the truth of a binary system for the lie of confusion. So they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the creator himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. That is why God abandoned them 
to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal relations with women, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men, and as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty that they deserved. Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking. There's a thinking. And let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness. Sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, gossip, backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. They invent new ways of sinning, and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand, right? The logic is there, but they refuse to understand. They break their promises, are heartless, and have no mercy. They know that God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die, yet they do them anyway. Worse yet... They encourage others to do them, too. And that last phrase is important for us because long gone are the days to say, well, I don't participate in it. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. not, you know, doing this, but I'm going to vote for people to have the freedom, the freedom to, do to do it. Yeah. Paul says, whoa, whoa, whoa. If you participate in voting for the freedom for others, you're guilty. Yeah. And it's, it's you know, you look at it and you go, well, no, this is, this is old fashioned. Yeah. And you go, call it whatever you want. Yeah, it's it's timely. And it's it's timely. It seems to be happening uh -huh. right now. I mean, I we're not even really posing. Hey, consider the possibility that the wrath of abandonment's upon us. I think it's a given fact in yeah. most every church that that's reading their Bibles and understand what we've seen in our lifetime is definitely this this wrath of abandonment. And I know it's happened in history too. Yeah, I'm sure this yeah. happened to the Roman society yeah. in a real similar way. And we're reliving kind of the same yeah. same wrath of abandonment. I mean, Rome now. fell not from external. No. They, they fell internally. Yeah, internally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And internally, we're just going to let the Marxists take power and, and strip away. As they're, they're pretending to be for all these special interest groups, but they're just being used. Yeah. You know, Black Lives Matter is they're using the black community with this slogan. They, yeah. they don't care about black lives. I assure you they don't. Yeah. They want to get in power. It's a power thing. And once in sure. power, yeah. it's going to be elitist against yeah. everybody else. And, and and there are those, again, you know, to be balanced, there are those that certainly are affirming, you know, in the sense of black, black lives matter and brown lives matter, and white no lives, doubt. white, blue no lives. But let's talk about the, you know, the organization. And again, this isn't, we're not making this up. Anybody can go on, you know, go on and, and see that the Black Lives Matter organization, you know, started by three transgender lesbian women, you know, depending on which one you slice them up. But, you know, they are very clear. They said, we're trained Marxists. Yeah. So let's, okay, turn your shoot over. They're trained Marxists. Yeah. Okay? They, they are representing now the, a push, and they're doing a very good job of organizing these different things in different places. But it's interesting, even this last week, there was a PhD woman who started the, the Black Lives chapter in Los Angeles. And she came out totally anti-biden i mean yeah. she said why would we vote for not vote for trump a white supremacist and vote for another white one you know <laughs> i was like wow so she she was well they don't want to use the system anyway they just want to overthrow it yep i mean critical oh. race theory has no there's no system inside critical critical thinking for that matter not necessarily race theory but they're they're critical thinking uh what do they call it other than race theory Critical theory. I'm Crit sorry. Critical, critical theory. theory. Critical race theory. Yep. Yeah. Mean, so critical so theory. Under the banner of social justice, yeah. right? All that. But there's no mechanism. Liberation theology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no mechanism to fix the system that you're in. It's it's revolution. Yeah. It's revolution it, or nothing. It is. That's well, why they're destroying things. So let's think about that. The, the, the leftist, if you want to use that term, Marxist agenda is not being perpetrated by the... Con Republican side, at least not no. yet. Okay, so the conservative side. I, I mean, but let's just say that what you do see is it's the progressives that are coming in that are trying to hijack, you know, John F. Kennedy Democrat Party, if you want to even say yeah. it that way, which is a long time ago. But if you see them coming in and they're making headway, the leaders now of that platform are giving them, and we see this, you know, the, the other progressives, but they aren't ashamed of saying. We're Marxist, okay? Yeah. So let's let's top ten. Let, top ten. <laughs> I'm not reading that. You can read I'll that. I'll read it. You're a better reader than That's I. You fine. know that, brother. But <laughs> this, these are Karl Marx again. You anybody yeah. can look this up. Yeah. They're they're they're. Oh, is this the Democratic platform? Or? No, this is the Karl Marx. 10 oh, okay. Things. I'm sorry. I'm... But <laughs> the reason why we're doing this, we're going to look at it to say in such a way that 
the, uh, the Marxist people are unashamed. Yeah. We're Marxist trained. This is yeah. this is what they're trained to go yeah. after, and they're saying we're going to do it through the democratic platform. And this, I mean, this didn't just happen. This has been happening in our school oh. systems. This has been 30, 40 years of or this, longer. It being pushed into our society at college level at for every sure. Turn college, of our, yeah. Every turn of a corner, it, it looks like some of us older people are like, wow, where did this come from? This has been pushed on our yeah. society for anybody. Going to public school yeah. tragically for years now. Yeah, I mean, go ahead and, so, go ahead and read it. So yeah. the the first one, abolish abolition of property and land and application of all rents of land to public purpose. Okay, so th there's this. Um, okay, will will land um, property rights right? Will it be abolished? Well, what what's the subtle thing here? That if you're rich, you're evil. Okay, yeah, automatic. Yeah. Yeah. So if you own property, which if we're going to use that term, if you're a property owner, then you're rich, you're evil automatically, then, okay. The second goes along with this, a heavy progressive or graduated income tax. Okay. Oh, yeah, well, we, that is definitely in the Democratic <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and, and now, but let's be fair. It has been part of the tax system, you know, even on the Rep Republicans have voted yeah. for a graduated thing. So you see this coming in, it's, it's infiltrating, okay, mm -hmm. right? What, well, what's the opposite of this? A flat tax. Yeah. And it, what do you see in the Bible, in the Old Testament? A flat, flat tax. tax yeah. You do see that. Yeah. So this is this progressive where, again, you have the subtle thing of, of uh, abolishing property rights or, or wealth. You know, it, wealth is bad, mm -hmm. you know, except for the elite. Yeah. Right? They're going <laughs> to, they're not going to give up the, their thing. So the abolition of all rights of inheritance. Oh, my goodness. That's horrible. Again, that's another <laughs> anti-rich or anti-wealth. Anti anti it's sure. anti-success. Yeah. So what it does, these subtle things are eliminating. What are they eliminating? Well, why would I want to go get a job when I can just get my, my guaranteed income? Yeah, universal. That's a progressive, guaranteed right? Guaranteed income. Yeah, that was discussed in this campaign. The confiscation of the property of all immigrants and rebels. <laughs> immigrants, those that are leaving. E. And you think, this is where you have tyranny. And it's interesting, like, you look at, <laughs> I've wanted to have a, just an interview with an Antifa person to say, can you tell me, well, we're anti-fascist. Can you tell me, can you define fascist? Well, fascist is blah, blah, blah. And then you go, ultimately, it's about, they're, they're against what they see as tyranny, uh, censorship. <laughs> and yet, that's exactly yeah. what they're doing. That's what they're going towards. I know. Yeah. It, it, it's so ironic and just, it's a bad joke. It, it's, it, it's just, it's like, is this a Saturday Night Live skit? They're just, they don't see what they're pushing as a, Exactly what they well. This is going to Romans for. one that the inability to think, yeah. right? True. Let, 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 let me bring this up. Okay, I'll bring this one up because this came up last year. Is uh, this was an article? This is the inability to think. All right, yeah. that they don't see what they're promoting or what they're hating is exactly what they're promoting. Yeah. Well, this is this is an article. A leading pro life leader is criticizing House and Senate Democrats. This is in the state of Oregon for promoting a bill that would protect kittens Meow. in research experiments from harm days after the same exact Democrats opposed a bill that would protect human babies who survive abortion. Senator wow. Jeff Merkley introduced the Kittens in Traumatic Testing Ends Now Act on March 7th. Nearly 3,000 kittens have been used in research since 1982, according to one USDA administrator. Now, this is his quote. The Kitten Act will protect these innocent animals from being needlessly euthanized in government testing and make sure that they can be adopted by loving families instead. Wow. Now, what about if you said the Unborn Babies Act will protect these innocent babies from being needlessly aborted in government regulation and make sure that they can be adopted by loving families. Yeah. So they were being called out. Like, are you serious? Yeah. You Just, you know, a day ago, you're opposing laws that would protect Amazing. babies it like i said if it weren't so sad it would be funny it it's, boggles it, the mind so mm -hmm. it's so wicked to think that they have a complete disconnection and it's it it boils down to you know going going back to the old origins of man you know are we are we image bearers of god do we have an innate value just by who we are yeah, exactly yeah. or do we evolve from nothing it meaning and purpose is out the window with many of these elitists who just yep. think that they can make, draw things in the sand and say, this is how it's going to be. Yep. And and it's only this, it's their preference. And yep. it has no ring of truth in it. And the foolishness is, is soon to follow. We're, we're basically 
it's not going to make sense, which it's just not anymore. No. I think too that, you know, I have, you know, Sarah, you know, she has a lot of friends and, and they're just, we see two things that have contributed to the openness of all this stuff. One is, you know, the, um, really the university system. I mean, it's, yeah. it's completely, it's been taken over by this sort of agenda, the Marxist agenda, but you also see it being promoted more and more now over the last really 15 years with social media. And so think about this. So we'll just, I'll just go really quick. Number five, the centralization of credit in the hands of the state by means of a national bank. Okay. We see that in Venezuela. That didn't work out very well. No, okay. No, no. Extension of factories and instruments of production owned by the state. Again, Venezuela is your great example and improvement of soil generally in accordance with the common plan. So there's kind of your green deal. Equal liability of all to labor, establishment of industrial armies, especially for agriculture, a combination of agriculture with manufacturing, gra gradual abolition of the distinction between town and country by a more equitable distribution of the population. And, the, and number 10, free education for all children in public schools. And yeah. you look and you go, it, well, that's what I heard last night in the vice president day, free education, free, yeah. you know, and you think, yeah. why would they want that? Well, they would love to continue to indoctrinate. Mm -hmm. And now let's, what is the basis of Marxism? Atheism, it, right? It is. But you know, what, what's interesting is I think it rides the coattail of a common rejection of the gospel. For sure. When yep. someone turns around and says, well, what do you mean the, the guy in you know, Afghanistan that never heard the name Jesus is going to hell. You don't go to hell because you haven't heard the name Jesus. You exactly. go to hell for the sins you've committed against the God. The creator. You know, the Romans you one know, creator. Romans yep. one creator. Yep. Without excuse. That's yep. why you're that's why you're going to hell is because you're guilty as charged of your own sins. And God is right. It's the it's the um, you know the human nature of man. It's our fallen depraved yeah. deprived nature of man. Yeah. And you, but you take that same logic man's logic versus god's you know my ways are not your yeah. ways humanism you, sure. you yeah. take you take that same logic now you apply it to the fact that well, everything needs to be equal yeah exactly. He, yeah. so it really rides a coattail of that rejection of christ where basically it makes reasonable sense and my logic says everybody needs to be equal yeah. we need to treat everybody fairly so you have too much money you have land yeah. you have this so they're bringing it back to just to this this logical conclusion that they're going to try to make everything equal yeah. Except the elitists, yeah, they're going to rule over it. Yeah. Oh, there's always an elite class. I mean, that's the, even in Marx. There's, there's there's the bourgeois class, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. what we saw. I mean, th there's those that look down, and but, but again, how do they get into power? You know, they, and ultimately, what you you see this in in history too, where Thomas Jefferson, uh, you can look this quote up. He says, "If the electorate ever realize that they can vote themselves," he uses the term largesse. Out of the national treasury, this this experiment of America is yeah. over, and it's interesting that you, when you want to um, give out universal income, again you have the, the 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 progressives in that regard, the Marxists in that they want this because they know that imagine now you've been getting your thousand bucks or two thousand a month, and this other guy comes along and says, well, hey, I, I believe in privatization. I believe that you should work for your money instead of having high tax rates, etc., and rewarding hard work. Mm -hmm. No one's going to vote for that guy. Now, and once, so the they person, get, once they, once they get in there, mm -hmm. no, they're, it's part of that human nature yep. where basically they're just going to be content. And, it, and it's tragic. I mean, Jesus said, you'll always have the poor with you. you okay. Yep. And it I remember Deuteronomy too. Yep. Yeah. And I remember um, the early days volunteering at the food pantry that we ran for almost 30 years here and thinking I was going to fix poverty or whatever. You know, <laughs> sure. you, now, I mean, I really didn't think that, but, yeah. but, but you're talking to these people, you're encouraging them to get a job, and, but you only see them next week and the week after the next week, and then they're telling you the excuses why they can't get a job, yeah. and then you smell alcohol in their breath or whatever. Sure. And so you, you realize sad, yeah. that sad. what Jesus said is this is a human problem due to our fallen nature, yeah. and there's not a real fix of it. There's never going to be a permanent fix. No. But but it, but they they use this population as a way to then corrode the 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 you know the people that are ambitious and that are working, and they can they easily can get sucked into the laziness because that's part of the nature. Like I'll just wait for my handout, and yeah, it's tragic because if you grow that, that's their that's their voting base. It is the voting base, and you know in in, in the early church. Um, they, they had a very big concern for the widows and the orphans and the poor. And so the church, it wasn't like they didn't care. And as Christians, we care for sure. But we also recognize Paul's scripture. If you don't work, you don't eat. 
Yeah. You know, and but yet there are those that can't work anymore, and we help those. But again, in my own personal sphere, to see people say, mm, I can't take a job because I'll make too much money and I'll, I'll lose my check. Yeah. Yeah. It's frustrating. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's, it's sad. I'm sad for them yeah. because they're, then they're stuck in this, this lower class system forever. Yeah. Yeah. Ever, forever. I mean, they're. And I think what's, what's missing is, is biblical vernacular in the sense that, you know, you talk about law and justice mm -hmm. and you talk about what are people actually doing when, when you take money from someone else and give it to someone else, redistribution of wealth forced, forced, yeah. is full on stealing. Yeah. And it's what, you know, what, what the constant, what the, the founders are worried about is the redistribution, you know, if you can vote in this yep. stuff, then, then it's all, all, all for naught. Because pure democracy just pop, you know, it just, it, it says in a pure de democratic, you know, way that, you know, if, if the populace wants it, then they can do it. So right, if, if yeah. they want to, if more of the country wants to take away the wealth from the rich, then more of the, and that, but that's not who we are. We're a republic. Yeah, we're, we're republic. Under a There's a big difference. There's a big huge difference. difference. Yeah. And, and we've lost our, the sight of who we are as a republic. And, and tragically, and tragically, you know, Here's a good example of why I never understand why Republicans and in one sense Christians we, we we see about turning the other cheek. Maybe we never understood turn the other cheek that Jesus taught, because you think in 1962 when they when they banned prayer in school, and think of the fabric, the moral fabric and the Christian fabric of our country in 1962 had to have been larger than oh, now. For sure, yeah. right? Yeah. Think if every single parent withheld their children the very next day in school. Oh. Do you think do you think that would still be the law of the land? Nope. And somehow we don't behave that way. Yeah. I, I we just don't. Nope. You know, but the but the, but the left is quick on boycott and, and yeah, protesting. Yeah. The the right or riots. Not, riots. <laughs> Peaceful we riots. Don't, we <laughs> don't know how to do that. No. I don't know why we don't, but it just like we just kind of turn the other cheek. We do turn oh, the other cheek, yeah. And we just kind of yeah. roll with the punches. We so roll if that's the camp in school, okay, whatever. Guess we'll we'll make do or we'll we'll make the yeah. best of it or whatever. But yeah, no, we're, yeah. we're not out uh Rioting and destroying and no, you know, no, but that would have just been a simple act of pulling all the kids from school. Yeah. No one, no, we didn't have the internet to communicate that. It's true, yeah, you know, but uh, but and I don't know all the Christians. You know, some would have went to, you know, whatever they would have went to, uh, uh, Romans, you know, thirteen, fourteen, and dealing with, uh, you know, obeying the law yeah, or obeying. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we have to obey. You know, yeah. that so I mean, you have that whole Christian argument. But anyway, when you when you talk about vernacular again. When we talk about law and order and we talk about what the Bible talks about sin mm -hmm. and you talk about what behavior actually looks like from a biblical perspective. Yeah. And that's another way looking at looking at your vote is looking at what what is opening the door for more uh, sinful behavior. Yeah. What is what is eroding the moral fabric that that is revealed to us? And we're not we're not saying let's go under the law. We're not doing any no, of that. Not. But but we're in a society that basically the loving thing to do is to push back the evil, yeah, yeah. because the fallen nature of man wants to run further and further away from God. And so all God has to do for the wrath of abandonment, is my opinion, is just pick his hand up, and we're going to run further yeah. away from him. And as we see that as Christians, I think we need to understand that what we're dealing with is is sins and laws, and there needs to be proper law and order. Yeah, and. Well, if you look at the platforms again, so conservative, you know, liberal, whatever, however you want to phrase it, but I I tend to think as we all should. I'm I'm First John two six. I'm to walk as Jesus walked, and so you know, would Jesus ever vote for a, a platform that would kill babies and destroy what his own teaching on the the family? It's impossible. He would never do it. No. And so I look at it and I and would Jesus be a one person? That he would say. I think he would be as in those categories. Now, let's go to the conservative side. You say, well, is there anything there that Jesus would look and say, that violates clearly my word? I mean, and as far as I can tell, I mean, again, Republicans aren't perfect. Conservatism isn't perfect. You know, that whole thing. But what, you don't have anything there. And if they did, then I would probably, I'd say, hey, I can't do it either. But if they did, show me where anything on that other side, I'm not saying that he would vote for it. Maybe he would, maybe he wouldn't. But what I do know is he would definitely not vote for this. He couldn't. I can't imagine that he would. It would violate his own nature I to cannot. to uh, to promote something that he clearly did. Over here, could you know? Is uh, is there greed? Is there thing? Yes. But is that systemic? What you have over here, as I, as I mentioned in the article, on day one of the president's thing, he's gonna give money or take away money for killing of children. Planned Parenthood. 
Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it will in the military, you name it, yeah. all the way through the yeah. government. Day one. Yeah. And what, what, what's happened, though, too, is why someone would lean towards voting towards some of the, the, the liberal heart kind of bleeding heart stuff, you know, about the injustices. And, it, and once again, it goes to, to the vernacular of when you, when you stand before a judge guilty of some crime, do you pull out a briefcase full of excuses mm -hmm. and in terminology that's coming from this argumentation that basically, oh, I was born, I was born in poor circumstances. I, my father left when I was young. I was yeah. abused. I have, I was on Ritalin. I was, you know, sexually abused. I was verbally abused. I, you know, what, whatever briefcase full of, of terms you can, you can, you kind of ascribe to your victimhood. You now use in your defense yeah. to explain away, and that's where that's where proper terminology is so important. When we when we see society caving into all of these different special interest groups that have these different victim yeah. statuses, yeah. Um, it, it it makes justice impossible to have. Yeah. The word social justice, the idea is is once you add the word social to justice, justice is out the window. Yeah. It's truly out the window. And that's the tragedy is the Bible calls us to, to be very black and white. And in some sense, Kurt, I mean, people are, are very offended by the black and whiteness of, Christi of Christianity, of, of what, how Jesus God's taught. standards, you're sure? His standards yeah. mm -hmm. are just simply this or that. Yep. There's no, no two ways about There's it. There's no spin in it. I mean, you're not going to spin God. I no. Mean, he knows what's in the heart. No, they're, they're That's why some is. of this language by Tiff Keller is, is very spinny, you know, in that regard. And again, here's the thing. We'll, we'll be very clear. It's not my job to say if somebody who claims to be a Christian votes the Democratic Party or, you know, votes pro-abortion. You know, there's so-called Christians that are pro-choice. Pro I don't get it. It's not my job to say whether they're saved or not saved. I, I, well, God didn't appoint me to that task. I'm just bewildered. <laughs> I, yeah. I was like, how in the world yeah. do you reconcile this in your own mind unless you're deliberately you know, blinding yourself to those truths of slaughter, you know, versus kittens is an example. You yeah. think, okay, yeah. but here, you know, you have, well, go ahead. You can, I'll, I'll read the quote. This is by Tim Keller, who's well known. I mean, he, he this is public, so we're not bashing him. I mean, we're just, this is one of his tweets. This is one of his tweets and we're interacting. He says, the Bible tells me that abortion is a sin and great evil. He should have stopped right there, right? Yeah. Black yeah. and white yeah. is a sin and great evil. But it doesn't tell me the best way to degree, to decrease or end abortion in this country, nor which policies are most effective. And you go, well, did what do you mean by that? Did you undo? How about just outlaw it? Yeah. I mean, in, in, in one of the things we talked about, we can replace the word abortion. The Bible tells me that slavery, you know, or um, premeditated murder or rape is a sin Robbery, and great evil. Anything, yeah. But the Bible, let's use rape. The Bible tells me that rape is a sin and great evil, but it doesn't tell me the best way to decrease or end a rape in this country, nor which policies are the most effective. Abolish it. Abolition it. Yeah. I, I, does it matter how we get there? Yeah. We, what we're after, we're not out to say, well, you know, rapes on Tuesdays are okay. You know, we're, we know it's a black and white issue that it's wrong. Yeah. And the only solution is get there immediately. ASAP. We don't, we don't, we don't have rape laws that are um, great gradations, no, right? No, no. And the consequence should be the death penalty, which, uh, you know, that would really deter it right oh. off the bat. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, and that's what, what's amazing is you get people, you know, women who use this argument like, what if I'm raped and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. It's, well, I, we're against rape also. Yeah. <laughs> but why kill the kill the, the unborn yeah. for, for that? The innocent in this regard. Now, now, to be fair with Tim Keller, in context, his argument is primarily he talks about the conscience of an individual Christian's mm -hmm. conscience yep. that if if for some reason poor people uh, pull your heartstrings, you know, more so than than the abortion issue, you should be able to vote the Democratic ticket because, because they like, believe they're more geared towards you like the, the social poor. justice platform, the social programs, the social yeah, programs yeah, sure. that they have. So he's trying to keep the door open that it's okay to both both parties. And like 30, 40, 50 years ago, yeah, I think that made more sense. You were talking about JFK, but but it just doesn't seem possible anymore. In the social programs, once again, I don't appreciate how the, the Democratic Party resolves them. And I will, I will confess that the church, 
in some senses, has dropped the ball where we haven't done the best job yeah. because the church really should be the, the welfare net or the social. We should be the ones well, loving our neighbor in such a way that they tr the church gets turned to well, let's instead be, of the government. Let's be, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try to balance all that is that, you know, um, one of the churches I was at before, we used to have um, a food pantry. Well, we recognized. We had one for almost 30 yeah, years here. Right. So, yeah. So, one of the things that we recognized was that, hey, um, the, the the goal is the gospel. We use food yep. to give. It's the we, power of God. Right in Romans 1 again. Yep. We're giving them food and we're giving them the eternal message because if we don't give them the gospel, they go to bed hungry on a, on a, or they go to bed on a full stomach and they die with a heart attack, they're in hell. I mean, well, well that, yeah. that's not God's answer. No. But what happened for us is they told us, well, you won't get food from the Illinois Food Bank. If you share the gospel. Yeah. So now you have government regulation forcing us to drop the ball. I mean, here we were the only, we were the only crew in town. Yeah. I mean, we, and it was great what we did, but by, through their regulation, they're forcing the church out. And they'd rather yeah. have those people hungry. That, and we weren't forcing anything. We we're like, hey, you got to say a prayer or get baptized before you get your food. Yeah. We, it would be a very, hey, we're just here to tell you that God loves you. Again, God's heart. Oh, that you would just obey my word, receive my son so you can have eternal life and life would be well for you. Yeah, here's a bag of food. Yeah. We, we had the sim under the exact same similar similar rules and stuff, and yeah. we just had a way of uh, lining them up in one sense and having them sit yeah. and wait while they organized the thing, and yeah. meanwhile, I, uh, me or someone else gave a message. So. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So they, they we just carried on that way, and, and it, it worked really well. I think the Pavages did a fantastic yeah. job of tightrope walking that. Yeah, tight it was it to, is a tightrope to rope. accomplish yep. it, and. Uh, and 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 it it served God's glory and purpose yeah. and and we gave Him thanks like yeah. all the things we're talking about in Romans one is yeah. is amazing. I think what as as we wrap it up in that sense, I mean, you have this agenda is an atheistic, dominating, controlling agenda. Without God, it's humanistic, you know, Marxist all the way. That was the that's just the way that they they rolled. I mean, it was the foundation of communism. And it, it didn't promote or provide opportunities for us to freely share the gospel. So anybody that wants to lean that way, you, you might get more than you bargained for if you if you consider yourself a Christian. Yeah. You know, pretty soon you're going to go, well, I didn't think that the, the progressives would be that far. Well, you, that's where you got to do your research. And for us, in my own thing, I mean, everyone's going to do, do their own thing. But I I, I can't give even a, a, a crack uh, it, uh, for that sort of thinking, that sort of agenda or philosophy, because it's so anti-Christian, so anti-biblical, yeah. so anti-gospel. Yeah. And we know that's the is. only answer. It is. It truly is. And and tragically, uh, this is where we find ourselves. Now, now we are going to put this thing to bed. I think we've spoke long enough. It's been an yeah, sure. uh, enjoyable conversation. Yeah. I've enjoyed myself. From, from this conversation, there's multiple coattails to point to yeah. in regards to pretty much the the sign of the times and where yeah, we're at for sure yeah and so on and so forth and so so i'm going to uh uh edit in momentarily the agenda movie we got to pick oh, a date nice, to do that nice, yeah <laughs> because that's that's kind of the the book end of this the other yeah. end where basically that's going to complete this thought you're going to see where basically yeah. this is something that's been on the horizon for a long time and, and it'll provide more evidence and facts for exactly yeah. what if and we know where it's going we, yeah scripture we know where it's we going it's nice to book. have a movie yeah to tell us about yeah. the facts and how it's been going but we know where it's going and and we're going to continue to be more and more ostracized and by yeah. these in censorship i mean you can just go to the social media now and see how christians viewpoints are being censored yeah over exactly. and over and over remove exactly. their channels etc yeah and just pay attention out there. Notice, you know, the the mantra behind all this is there is a one world problem that needs a one world government to solve it, and that's yeah. that's the end all direction. And that's that's that that writing's on the wall. And that's pretty much using fear, creating a problem, whether it's a pandemic yeah. or global warming, lack of freedom. La it's it's, it's, gonna, it's freedom. gonna take our freedoms away. And and uh, hang on for the ride, but. But trust God. He's yeah, in well, yeah, we're not, I'm not, I mean, as much as we know, I'm not fearful. I trust that God's grace will be sufficient yeah. for that day when uh, maybe my head gets cut off. Okay. Yeah. Well, and it's exciting. <laughs> yeah. This is, God chose us to be alive during yeah. this, during these birth pains. Such a time as this, us. right? Like an Esther moment. For such a time as this. <laughs> such time as this. All, all right. right. With that said, uh, hope, hope this was enlightening. God bless you all. We'll see you on Sunday.